Hello and welcome to this short presentation to discuss Cobalt Strike, how it gets onto your systems, how it evades your existing security controls. How might you detect and decontaminate if you've been infected? What is Cobalt Strike? Well, it's actually a legitimate piece of software that was developed as a weapon for penetration test. So it's a framework and it deploys a beacon. That's, that's what the, they call that agent to the target. It is originally meant for penetration testers that are white hat hackers that you hire in order to identify weaknesses in your network. This beacon is remarkably flexible and it enables a wealth of functionality, including command line execution, key logging, mimikatz, file transfer, and a lot of other stuff. Beacons are small, they are in memory, they are fileless, and so they're quite difficult to detect once they get installed. It's a well-written, a stable and highly customizable framework. And even though it's legitimate software that is sold to red teams, the reality is it's often stolen and used by a wide range of threat actors. By the way, the vendor that uh, sells this is called Help Systems. So well-known operators, cyber criminal gangs that use Cobalt Strike include Conti Ryuk, and our evil Sodino Kibi, of course, our evil announced last year that they were packing it in. They had made enough money, but you know, how can you believe anything these guys say? So how does Cobalt Strike work? Well, as I told you, there are two parts to it. There's the Cobalt Strike server that's hosted by the attacker somewhere on the internet. And then there is a beacon that they try to deliver to your endpoint. And all the traditional methods of delivering software to your endpoint uh, are supported by Cobalt Strike. For example, if you visited a phony baloney website that was hosting it, the beacon, it could deliver to you via HTTP or HTTPS. If you were convinced to somehow resolve some phony baloney domain name, it can be delivered via DNS. If it's already inside your network, then the Windows server message block or SMB protocol can be used to distribute it further. And then there, of course, there is that goodie, the oldie but goodie, which is phishing email. Earlier this year, we saw an advertising job opportunity with surprisingly the Department of Defense. If you fell for it and you double click the word file, then it looked to see whether you had, you know, this old 2017 vulnerability in Office, figuring that if you fell for this kind of lure, then you probably really hadn't updated Office in a while. And then that resulted in a series of actions that ultimately got the beacon to be installed. Once the beacon is installed, it will phone home to the Cobalt Strike server. This is the command and control CNC or C2 server. And it can be very sneaky indeed. It will pretend to be legitimate traffic. It will be asynchronous. It will be low volume, difficult to detect. It even has the ability to masquerade as some other piece of malware. So even though it itself is Cobalt Strike, it can look like something else. And ultimately, it will operate under the direction of the command and control server. As I showed you in the previous slide, it's got a ton of functionality so that the attacker can make it do all kinds of things to your endpoint. So if you, in fact, have been infected by a Cobalt Strike beacon on some of your endpoints, how on earth would you actually detect this stuff? It's actually quite difficult. Some of the brute force methods that are available, and this is true of the latest versions that have been patched up, you could maybe look at command lines and identify things that don't look right. In fact, that's how we found it in the explanation you're going to see in the next slide. You could scan public network infrastructure and say, you know, from inside your network, who's accessing? And is that possibly a Cobalt Strike server? You could upgrade your endpoint protection. Some of the newer EDR solutions, as opposed to the traditional antivirus, will perform in-memory scanning. They will look at uh, binaries that appear on the system dynamically, statically. They will try and find abnormal process lineage. You know, finally the process got launched, but not from the usual path, not from the usual folder, not by the usual parent process. And so what's up with that? You could also do it through monitoring network traffic. If you're lucky enough, then the IP address or the destination where Cobalt Strike Beacon is communicating back to the server is something that's known to be bad, and therefore you could catch that. All fairly difficult, labor-intensive, thankless kinds of jobs. And of course, they can all be defeated because Cobalt Strike is so infinitely configurable. So these are not foolproof techniques, but uh, till you get something that's much better, this eternal vigilance is the price of freedom. So how did we catch Cobalt Strike? Here's uh, how it occurred. 
Our managed open XDR customer was an MSP, and they were serving a retailer in the United States who has hundreds of locations around the nation and about uh, 2,500 employees. They had invested, of course, in endpoint protection, but it was a legacy signature-based antivirus. The MSP had been pretty diligent in making sure that the end systems were patched and that uh, you know nobody was running out-of-date software. It is a thankless job in and of itself, but that's why you hire an MSP, and the MSP had done his job you know, pretty well. Notwithstanding that, Cobalt Strike Beacon actually landed up on one of the endpoints, and it began to communicate or attempted to communicate with you know, its C2 server. What happened was it launched PowerShell from that uh, in-memory process, and the PowerShell invocation was captured by the NetSurian sensor. That's one of the things that it does is captures all of these command line executions and then transmits the command line back off to the NetSurian managed OpenXDR console where an analyst can actually look at it. And it triggered an alert saying PowerShell running suspicious command, which is why an analyst sort of woke up and said, what exactly is the command that PowerShell has been launched with? What he noticed was a couple of things that you know raises hackles. One is there was a URL in the command line. And the second, there was an attempt at you know obfuscation by using this goofy capitalized download file where some letters are capitalized, others are not. This is actually an attempt to, you know, if you're if you're doing detection by pattern matching lowercase download, uppercase download file, well, you're not going to catch this because it's a it's sort of mixed case and it's kind of goofy. It's not by any means a foolproof method, but it's a technique that these guys use. And it was enough to make the analysts start worrying. What did he do? Took the URL away to a sandbox and accessed it and found that a file was getting downloaded. And that file was in fact malicious. Also the IP reputation of the address behind that URL, when we looked, that turned out to be something that had been categorized as known bad in the last 24 hours. So got enough information to escalate to an MSP. What are all the places where this has occurred? What's going on? And then the recommendation was please isolate those endpoints and then maybe re-image them because it's probably hopeless now to try to actually find it and fix it. So the MSP was able to do this promptly and prevent you know, any further damage into their customer network, which is a you know excellent example of how you could have all the protection in the world, but it won't be enough if you're not watching constantly. We also added all of the hashes to the unsafe list so that the application control function of Event Tracker will auto-terminate these if in fact it had managed to spread you know, sidewise laterally inside the network. So you're asking, how can I protect my organization against COBOL strike? Well, a couple of ways. Some of them are pretty obvious. I'm going to rehash them for you. At an organizational level, in case this thing is happening through phishing, which is one attack vector, you should think about web content filtering, attachment inspection, apply headers to warn the user. You are downloading something that came from an outside place. Are you sure? Yes, no. Just another step to make them aware. Of course, patching of endpoints in the example I showed you, they were exploiting Office uh, and old Office vulnerability. So you've got to patch not just, of course, your operating system components, but all of your software components as well. Easy to say, but it's hard to do at every endpoint all the time, 24-7, but it's a job. It has to be done. So that's what you could do at an organizational level to mitigate if you, in fact, get a COBOL strike infection. At a user level, you could train them, you know, do not be clicking on these funny documents and then have mock phishing campaigns to find the repeat offenders and send them off for training. You could think about giving up your traditional antivirus to something that can maybe has a hope of detecting COBOL strike. At Surian Managed Open XDR Endpoint Protection Solution is one such. It uses deep learning. It does uh, in-memory scanning. It does analysis of the statics of the binaries, anything new that has appeared in the system. It's got a wealth of capability when it comes to detecting these kinds of you know, fileless malware. So that is something you could do to protect yourself against COBOL strike. But notwithstanding all of these, since perfect protection is not practical, the reality is you should assume breach. No matter what you did, at some point, something like this is going to sneak by. And then where are you? Well, the answer is you should be monitoring on a regular basis, something like OpenXDR, which integrates with all of your existing security investments and a 24-7 team behind it is a line of defense, this kind of pernicious attack. Thank you for your attention. Hope this was useful. Thank <laughs> you.